the problems of life don't give notice. They come on a daily basis and almost at every minute of your life. They don't come like the usual examinations that you do in school. Otherwise, there will be long enough notice and you'll be able to prepare not to fail. And the interesting thing is that these problems don't exempt anyone. Whether you are expecting it or not, whether you like it or not, they keep coming. There is no prayer you can pray to get problems away. Praying that you will not have problems is like praying that you should die. And nobody prays that you should die. Everybody wants to live. Even those who have prayed to die still struggle to live. Amen. <laughs> Even those who hang their necks still struggle to survive. You'll never see anybody willingly submit to death. Every natural man wants to survive. Problems of life don't give notice. And if you don't act fast, you may end as an object of shame and reproach. This is why solutions to problems of life must be spontaneous. And what wisdom does is to help us to solve problems. Problems are not to be prayed away. Problems are to be solved because the credibility of life is in the ability to solve problems. The honor of life is in the ability to quickly respond to problems by solving them. You are leaving this place this morning as a problem solver. Did I hear an amen from someone this morning? I want to show to you this morning one very vital force of wisdom that helps you discharge every problem as they come your way in such very quick succession that problems will not be able to stick to you. You believe in as if problems don't exist. There is this dimension of wisdom that we call inspiration. It is the vital force of wisdom. If you lack inspiration, you will suffer expiration. That is, people expire simply because they are no longer inspired. For as long as you are inspired, you will never expire. Without inspiration, there will be continuous failure in the battles of life. Inspiration is the gateway in the school of wisdom. Inspiration is the catalyst in the compound of wisdom. It is the major element required for you to operate in the wisdom of God. It is the capital requirement in the operation of wisdom. Checking through the gospel, you will see how Jesus largely operated by inspiration. He was faced with problems on a daily basis, but the force of inspiration bailed him out. They came to him one day without notice, brought a woman caught in adultery according to their uh, report. And they said to Jesus, Hey, we brought this woman to you to tell us what to do with her. We just caught her now red-handed inside adultery. And Jesus said, What does the law say? And he said, The law of Moses said, She should be stoned to death. And Jesus looked up and down. You know, that kind of uh, situation, you can't say, Okay, let me go and study and come back with an answer. There are situations that you can't wait to study to get an answer for. Here are people with stones in their pocket. If you say that stone her to death, they say, well, you are a murderer. If you say don't stone her, they say, well, no wonder. We saw her with you yesterday somewhere. You must be one of the people that is messing up with her. And Jesus looked up and down, and suddenly there was inspiration. Say with me, inspiration. And he said to them, well, this is not an issue of whether she should be stoned to death or not. If there be any of you who has never committed sin before, let him be the first to stone her. And everybody's conscience came alive. Ah, even this woman, they, they talk about self. I did with her yesterday. <laughs> and one after the other, they all withdrew. And there was solution. How many of you have ever faced sudden situations like that? You didn't prepare before. Somebody came to ask you a question. Or you are faced with a challenge in the place of your work. Or you are here face to face with temptation. You don't know what to do. You turn to the right, to the left. Everywhere you are gagged, you don't know what step to take. And suddenly something told you what to do. 
you will be living under such open heaven from today in the name of Jesus. Jesus largely used inspiration to sort out the problems of life. You know a lot of times they came to him with different questions. The Bible says, they came so that they may ensnare him with the words of his mouth. Several times Jesus would look at them and said, why do you go about killing me? He was able to know what they were thinking. He was able to detect what they were planning because of the power of inspiration. Look, life is too short. You don't have the time to study for everything. Yet, you have to succeed. And Jesus, knowing that we are going to be faced with such situation, he told us about this ahead of time. And I'd like us to look at, say with me, I need inspiration. On a daily basis. You know, many of the problems that goes on in families today is because of lack of inspiration. You are confronted with a situation with your husband. All you need is an inspiration. What do I say right now? That will quell this matter. What do I buy for my wife that will stop all of this trouble? There is just one thing you can do to stop every trouble around your life. What do I do for my children to make them love to be at home? You need to live on a daily basis under the inspiration of heaven. What do I do with my staff to motivate them, to make them stay here and love to work here? What do I do in relationship with my boss that makes me acceptable in everything that I do? Inspiration. Luke Gospel chapter 12. Come quickly with me. Verse 11, Jesus speaking. And when they bring you into the synagogues and unto magistrates, and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer, or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour. Say with me, the same hour. Yes. Uh -huh. So that means you don't have the time. In the same hour, the Holy Ghost shall teach you what ye ought to say. So inspiration is the gift of God. For you to be able to answer instantaneously for every issue of life that comes your way. The same hour, the same hour, that is to say there are hourly problems that you must solve. You can't have time to go to study, to get yourself out. The same hour, chapter 21 of the same Luke, verse 14 and verse 15. Set to it therefore in your heart, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. It will be so strong that none of your adversaries shall be able to gainsay or to resist. You go for interview and suddenly they ask you a question from what you never expected. At that moment you can say, excuse me, let me go and check the book. You need inspiration. From today... I bring you under the open heaven of inspiration. It is inspiration that gets you out of being stuck. It is inspiration that disallows you from being stagnated in any issue of your life. Before the question comes, the answer is imagined. That's inspiration. By comparison, inspiration is superior to reasoning. Now, reasoning is a process of mental exertion. Reasoning has to do with grinding information. You collect information here and there. You connect facts. You put the pros and the cons together. Consideration of several factors. That is what reasoning does. It puts you under mental exertion. You hear people say when they are faced with some problems, I'm thinking through. But what inspiration does is to take care of the process and deliver to you the product. Inspiration doesn't task your brain. Now, that is not to say that the thinking process is not necessary. But there are certain things you can think through that all you require at such moment is inspiration from heaven. A divine idea. Something just suddenly bursting forth in your soul, in your career pursuit, in your family relationship, at your place of work, something just burst forth through your soul. Sometimes through your mouth, you say something 
that you could never have imagined will come from your mind. And then you are credited for it. Now, Solomon largely lived under inspiration. My Bible tells me that God gave Solomon wisdom and largeness of heart. He gave him such an exceeding heart, full of inspiration. Two women brought a living child to Solomon, and each of them laid claim on this living child. And Solomon sitting down. That is not the time to say you want to go and study law or study, uh, you know, uh, security matters and investigation matters. How to investigate a dead and a living child between two women who are laying claim on the living child. But under inspiration, Solomon said, bring a sword here. Cut this child into two. Say with me, inspiration. inspiration. Cut this child into two. And as they were about cutting the child into two, the true mother of the child said, hey, leave the child alone. When she, the child grows up, he will identify who the true mother is. And for that inspiration, the Bible tells us that all men feared Solomon. People respect you for your inspiration. When you operate under inspiration, you look like a superstar. People think you have gone to a school to learn about intelligence. Inspiration is superior to intelligence. You can't sit down and be reasoning that out. You have to operate under inspiration to find a way out. Solomon will sit down and look at trees and get inspired and draw lessons from them. Solomon will look at a man and draw lessons from him. He will look even at ants and draw lessons from them for daily living. That is what it means to live under inspiration. And this day, I decree that your mental faculty will be connected to heaven for divine illumination and inspiration in the name of Jesus. Yeah. While thinking takes you through the process of mental exertion, inspiration suddenly delivers to you the product. It takes care of all the pros and the cons and gives to you delivery of what you should do. And the moment it is done, you find answers to all the problems confronting you. That is how you will begin to operate in the name of Jesus. I said that is how you will begin to operate in the name of Jesus. Inspiration is also what we call the spirit of quick understanding. In Isaiah chapter 11 verse 3, talking about the Holy Spirit. He said, he shall make you of a quick understanding. When you are under inspiration, you are never slow of understanding. You see, when you operate with slow understanding, you have slow results. Every time you want to experience a quick result, you must switch to the frequency of inspiration. Because when you are under inspiration... You have quick answers to all the problems of life. Inspiration is a sudden intuition that comes upon your mind. A lot of you sitting here perhaps will understand what I'm talking about. Suddenly something moves you to take certain steps, to make certain utterances that sets you apart and aside from all your colleagues and superiors. This day, I see you coming under the open heaven of inspiration. Yeah. Also, inspiration is superior to intellectualism. Inspiration is superior to intellectualism. It is superior to education. That you go to school doesn't mean you can solve the problems of life. Joseph never had any time to go to school. Daniel was a slave until I had the opportunity to go to school. David never had the opportunity to go to school. He was living among his father's sheep in the field until suddenly the Spirit of God came upon him. Concerning Daniel, in Daniel chapter 1 verse 20, the Bible says, when they checked all of them out, himself 
and his three colleagues were ten times better than others in all matters, in all matters, in all matters of knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Inspiration makes you wiser than all men. In Psalm 119 that we read at the opening of the service today, he said, I have more understanding than my teachers. That is very strange. How can a student become wiser than his teacher? It must be that while he is in lecture, somebody else is teaching him what the teacher cannot teach him. Thank God for education, but don't bank on your education. Thank God for experience, but don't rely on your experience. Thank God for your age, but don't count on your age. In Job chapter 32, verses 8 and 9, he said there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him understanding. He said, great men are not always wise, neither is wisdom with old people. Old age does not connote wisdom. Gone are the days when they will ask elders. After everybody has speak, spoken, they say, okay, the elders should speak. Inspiration. That's what you are receiving today. That's what Daniel received. And that is what you are receiving today. Daniel was inspired from heaven to know what to do. And I know that the same blessing is coming upon you today in the name of Jesus. We have a chain of people even in our time today, operating under divine inspiration. I read the story of a man called Harji Lutonio. He was a complete failure in school. He dropped out of school because he couldn't understand mathematics. Yet, before his death, he owned an engineering university where the core thing they do is mathematics. He was instrumental in manufacturing 50% of the hearth-moving equipment used during the Second World War by inspiration. It is being said that this man will be shown something from heaven by God and he will call the artisans and the mechanics to begin to fix them. And when they fix it, it is not like what he saw. He will tell them, this is not what I saw. This is not what I saw. And they will go into the workshop again and attempt to put it right. And he will tell them again, this is not what I saw. Until it became clear that what God revealed to him is what they did. God was teaching him from heaven. From today, God will be teaching you directly. You know, Jesus said, at that same hour, the Holy Spirit will teach you. The Holy Spirit will teach you. The Holy Spirit is still teaching people. Dr. Ora Robert was not a college graduate when he started Ora Robert University. He was not a graduate. Yet, he will sit down to interview professors under inspiration. Ora Robert University is over 40 years old today and getting stronger every day because of inspiration. Let's come closely. Look at the life of Bishop Oedepo, who sat down by the inspiration of heaven to write down all the philosophies of the university and sit down over the administration of the university without having gone through any special program under the inspiration of heaven. It is inspiration that gets you to do what you didn't go to school to learn. Inspiration connects your brain with your mouth and with your hands. You find yourself saying things you didn't learn and doing things you didn't go to train for. Thank God for training, but thank God much more for inspiration. I'd like you to believe God with me today that as you partake of this communion table, the same spirit that was guiding Christ, that was teaching Christ on a daily basis, will teach you wisdom by inspiration in the name of Jesus. Will somebody be ready to receive that this morning? Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I'm ready for it. It is inspiration that makes you ten times smarter than all of your teachers. Inspiration. The spirit of quick understanding. Look, if you live under inspiration, most problems of your life will be cheaply solved. Most problems of your life will be cheaply solved. Whether at home or at work, everywhere you go to, in your extended family, by the power of inspiration, I see God taking you to a new level in the name of Jesus. What then is this thing we call inspiration? I'd like to quickly summarize and put the definitions together for you in three different perspectives. What is inspiration? Inspiration is 
the movement of the Holy Spirit upon the mental faculty of man. Inspiration is the movement of the Holy Spirit upon your mental faculty. Job chapter 32 verse 8. There is the spirit in man. There is an object in man which looks ordinary. But when the inspiration of the Lord comes upon it, it turns it into extraordinary force. Peter was a local fisherman, but on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came upon him, his mind became ignited. After he spoke, the learned people came to him and said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Their hearts were pricked. Stephen never went to school. They just bedded Stephen and told him, Stephen, what do you have to say in your defense? And in chapter 8 of Acts of Apostles, chapter 7 and chapter 8, Stephen gave a long speech ranging from the life of Abraham to the time of Jesus Christ. And after he spake, the Bible says, they wondered what wisdom is this with which he spake. I also read about Ora Robert. One day he was invited and without handling any paper, on a national day, he gave a speech of the history of America. Standing just there under the inspiration of heaven. Inspiration is the movement of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of accuracy. The spirit of knowledge. The spirit that knows the past and the present and the future. When that spirit moves on you, particularly on your mind, inspiration is born. Inspiration is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Paul the Apostle, speaking in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. He said, I pray for you since I heard about your faith that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ will grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. It is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It is the special influence of divinity on the minds of human beings. Inspiration is the special influence of divinity on human minds. It is the breath of the Lord. According to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, he said, And from childhood thou art known the scripture, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation. And he said, Furthermore, for the spirit for the word of God came by inspiration and is profitable for our well being. I see God. Touching your mental faculty by the power of the Holy Spirit today. If you read about Daniel, concerning him, they said that he had the spirit of the Holy Ghost. He had the spirit of the Holy Ghost. So behind every inspiration is the spirit of the Holy God. He had the spirit of the Holy God. Daniel chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. He had the spirit of the Holy God. Chapter 5. Verses 10 to 16. Daniel chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. And then chapter 5, verses 10 to 16. I see you partaking of that spirit today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Inspiration is the movement of the Holy Spirit upon the human spirit. Number two, what is inspiration? Inspiration is the release of supernatural intelligence. It is the release of supernatural intelligence. Please note that inspiration is not a thing you learn. Neither is it what you reason out. But inspiration is what you receive, what is received by man as revealed by God. Inspiration can only be received by man as it is revealed by God. There is no school of inspiration. In the days of Daniel, there are three kinds of schools. There is the school of magicians. There is the school of astrology. And there is the school of soothsaying. This was the kind of wisdom that existed in the days of Nebuchadnezzar. The school of magic, the school of astrology, and then the school of soothsaying. So when the king had problem, he gathered all of these wise men to come to give him interpretation. 
And when they could not find a solution, Daniel stood up and said to him, Oh, you king, this wisdom you are looking for cannot be found among men. He said, but there is a God that reveals secrets unto men. There is a God that gives inspiration. There is no school of inspiration. It can only be delivered by God. And thank God you are serving that living God that delivers it. This morning you are receiving that gift in the name of Jesus. There is nowhere they issue certificate for inspiration. You can only receive it as a gift from the Lord. And I do believe that today, as you partake of this communion, the blood of Jesus is going to release upon you that spirit of supernatural intelligence. Somebody who believes, say loud, amen. Amen. Intellectualism is all about the study of various things of life. It cannot compare with inspiration. When you are inspired, the level of your understanding changes. You become superior in understanding than all men. I do believe that God is releasing that to you today in the name of Jesus. Number three, what is inspiration? Inspiration is spontaneous light. Spontaneous light. Spontaneous knowledge or idea. And we see a lot of that happen. Now, Jesus Christ, one day, sat among 5,000 men and women who needed food. And while the disciples were busy using their mental faculty to calculate economically how much food will be required, how much money will be required to purchase the food, the Bible tells us that Jesus himself knew what to do. Say with me, inspiration. From today, in every situation, you will know what to do. For he himself knew what to do. John chapter 6, verse 6. For he himself knew what to do. It is my earnest prayer that in every circumstance of life, you will know what to do. He himself knew what to do. Spontaneous knowledge of what to do. That's what we call inspiration. There was no notice given to Daniel. The king said, if you don't give me this interpretation, I will kill all of you. And Daniel went back home and sought the face of the Lord. And in the night, the Lord inspired him as to what to say. And on saying it, there was solution delivered to the problem of the king that elevated him and changed his position. Inspiration is the spontaneous light, is the spontaneous knowledge of what to say, of what to do per time. In the New Testament, that is what we call the gift of the word of knowledge. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you have the list of all the gifts of the Spirit. You have the gift of the word of knowledge. Knowing what to say per time. As occasion demands. Knowing what to do per time. To make you escape the troubles of life. And find solutions to the problems of man. Knowing what to say per time. Knowing what to do per time. Having a clear sense of judgment. That's what we call inspiration. As it was in the case of Solomon. When he was confronted with sorting out the issue with it from the two women. And I know that today, by the mighty hand of God, your mental faculty shall be thoroughly connected to heaven's inspiration in the name of Jesus. How to make inspiration work? Number one, have respect for the Holy Spirit. Have respect for the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the source of inspiration. Remember we read from Luke chapter 12. He said, at that same hour, the Holy Spirit will teach you what to say. Concerning Daniel, they said he has the spirit of the holy gods inside him. In every case of inspiration, the Holy Spirit is a fountain. That's why you have an advantage of the move of the spirit. Every move of the Holy Spirit culminates in supernatural intelligence. When the spirit of God moved upon Peter, he became intelligent. 
when the Spirit of God came upon Christ, he became intelligent. When the Spirit of the Holy Ghost dwelt inside Daniel, he became supernaturally intelligent. They were all living under inspiration by the Holy Spirit. So you must have respect for the Holy Spirit of God. Every successful pastor has a very strong leaning to the Holy Spirit as the absolute dependable force. I have found myself in several situations that it is just the inspiration of the Almighty God that built me out. Have respect for the Holy Spirit. He is the one who inspires. When that spirit came upon Solomon, he was operating with such intelligence that the pure wisdom of God was written in the book of you know, uh, Proverbs. Until he began to depart from God when his wisdom became corrupted. Have respect to the Holy Spirit. Make him your daily companion. Do not grieve him. Don't take step that will offend him. Number two way to make inspiration work for you. Live an anxiety-free life. Relax yourself. Be positive about issues of life. Certain situations are waiting you tomorrow. Don't have sleepless night over it. Jesus said, don't be anxious about what to say. He said, for at that same hour. You are going for interview. Relax yourself. Let the interview come first. By the time you get there, the Holy Spirit will put the right question in the mouth of your interviewers and put the right answer in your mouth. Are you there? Relax yourself. Be anxiety free. Charge your environment with praise and worship. Remain connected to the Holy Spirit of God. Live anxiety free. When you do that, you find yourself constantly living under inspiration. When the king in Babylon said to the wise men that he was going to kill them, Daniel went and approached his chief of staff and said to him, Why is the, uh, the king's matter as urgent as this? Tell him to give us time, tell him to relax. And Daniel went back home. He had 24 more hours to live. Yet, he was anxiety free. He went back home. If you look at Shadrach, Mr. and Abednego, when the king told them he would put them inside fire, you know what they said? They said, oh king, may you live long. Uh, concerning this matter, we don't have any concern to answer you. Uh, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. But in case he doesn't deliver us, we will soon meet him in heaven. They were so relaxed. Anxiety destroys mental ability to perform. There are people who can do well, but because of their anxiety, because of their anxiety, they lose control of their lives. Relax. There is money to pay for a business tomorrow. Relax yourself. Let tomorrow come forth. The Holy Spirit will inspire you what to say to get the money, where to go to get the money. The Holy Spirit works with us better when we are relaxed. Praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. I do know that from today, nothing will disconnect you from the inspiration of heaven. Yeah. Beginning with your steps that you'll be taking this week, I see the mighty hand of God guiding you to obtain results in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Rise to your feet with me. Hallelujah. Say with me, inspiration is working for me. And today again, I open up to be connected to the power of inspiration. I will no longer be stranded. I am walking under open heavens in the name of Jesus. Lift up those hands and give thanks to the Lord because of the power of inspiration that is working for you. The power of inspiration is working for you. The power of inspiration is working for you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. How many of you want your heaven to be open today for divine inspiration? I'd like you to pray, Lord, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Let your heaven open. Let there be daily inspiration for me. From this moment, I live under open heaven. I live under inspiration. No more dry moment for me. No more dry season for me. Holy Spirit of God, inspire me from today. In my career, in my family matters, in everything that I do. Speak to God right now, everybody. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we are prayed.